Hey everyone, welcome back to Cheddar at the Close. Elon Musk's lawyers are firing back at regulators, saying the SEC was infringing on the Tesla CEO's First Amendment rights. This stems back to Musk's Twitter activity and whether his tweets complied with settlement terms. Joining us now is Vinu Varghese, who is the criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor. Vinu, great to have you here with us today. Good to be here. Uh, let's dive right in here. Uh, do Musk's lawyers have a point here? I think they have a tough time. They actually made that First Amendment point as its last point of the brief. So there's a rule when you're a lawyer and you're in court, you start with your strongest stuff first and your weakest stuff last. They put that last in their brief. Mm. So, you know, this, this all starts with the fact that they're going to also have a tough time because it's clear that, you know, Elon Musk doesn't like the SEC. He said so. He's tweeted it. He said so on 60 Minutes. And this is going to be a problem for him as they move forward because it shows the order required him to get prior approval before tweeting. He didn't do that. So I think it's going to be, on its face alone, it's going to be tough for him. Were you able to take a look at the, the filing, uh, yes. the, the, the settlement from last year, and then this newest one? I looked at it, I looked and, it all. And what, what did you think? Is there, is there a stronger case from the SEC than there is for, in your opinion, obviously? Well, I, I think, again, when you have a, I would say yes. I, I think that the, the SEC, SEC has the SEC. I, I think the SEC, right. look, if you look at the SEC's filing, mm -hmm. it's 13 pages with another 33 pages of exhibits. The defense filing is 33 pages with another 103 pages of exhibits. What the defense is doing now, normally you may think that if you have more, it's, it's clearer, you know, but what they're doing is just piling evidence, on. Right. But that's not the case here. The SEC put forth a very simple argument. Now, the question is, what kind of penalty are they going to impose? Is Judge Nathan in the Southern District here, over here in New York going to impose? I'm not sure. But, you know, remember last time he, he tweets, he, he entered into a settlement two days later, mm -hmm. and he was fined $20 million. Mm -hmm. As he, uh, Tesla was fined $20 million. So you may be looking at something uh, similar here. Um, when we think about the historical battles between the SEC and CEOs of some of these major companies, is there anything to this proportion that we've ever seen in the past? Yeah, you know, one of the things the defense argued in its papers is that there haven't been a contempt motion filed in the last 10 years for this kind of action. All the contempt motions have been filed for freezing assets. And so that's an interesting argument to say that the SEC hasn't used that type of power in this kind of context, which is, in essence, to punish somebody for going publicly and saying right. a bunch of bad things. So that may, that may get a little bit of traction. But again, the First Amendment argument is the final, is the last argument they put forth. And then when you have lawyers saying that Mr. Musk reasonably acted diligently to reasonably comply with the order when you start using all these modifiers as to what he did it kind of shows you that they're not exactly on the strongest footing okay well so you do believe that the sec has a stronger case but do you also believe that there are grounds for elon musk to actually defend that he wasn't revealing anything material that's the strongest what, yeah. yeah explain that a little bit more so what he's saying is that there were reports released earlier this week that kind of supported what he was tweeting about. Now, the argument is that he overstated it by about 20 percent, saying that 500,000 cars in 2019, those 500,000 weren't supposed to be until the end of 2020. To make an argument, he overstated the number by 20 percent. And then he did issue a, a kind of retraction a couple hours later. So do you think that that's an admission that he, A, was revealing something that he previously hadn't or that he had just actually made a mistake in overstating the number? I think as their lawyers have put forth, forth, this was aspirational, that this is what he intended, you know, this is what they were hoping for. I don't think in itself the, the tweet is that bad. I think the problem is the fact that he wasn't fulling, fulfilling or going by the directives put forth in the order. And then when you have these multiple, you know, infractions and you start saying, he said on 60 Minutes, I don't respect the SEC. So when you add that and you add these tweets, I think it's a little bit of trouble for him. And it seems like the, it's the context and the body of the relationship between the two entities, Musk and the SEC, that's going to come into question if they go through with more of these proceedings as well for the demo. There's a whole thing in law where you look at the, the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law, right? So is he violating? You can argue that he's violated the letter of the law by not complying with the directives, but he's really violating the spirit of the law. Well, it depends on your viewpoint of whether insulting the SEC violates the spirit of the law. I mean, one way you can look at this might be some, you know, post-traumatic uh, stress from, you know, smoking pot on television and he lost his security clearance. 
and now he's trying to get that back. So it's a lot of stuff with Elon Musk that never ceases to be. It's nonstop entertainment. I just I worry about the sanity of the lawyers that are working at the company that are hired to write to do due diligence and to try to rein him in a little bit. If you were on his legal team right now, what do you think it is that he, he's just not getting? Maybe that's not getting through to him uh, about the about the due diligence that he has to perform now as a result of the settlement. Well, look, uh, all of us as lawyers, we have difficult clients. I can, I can only imagine a guy who's as of such a big name as Elon Musk, what kind of difficulty that must be to rein him in, right? You have the ego that brought him to such success and trying to rein in that ego. His general counsel resigned very recently. Mm -hmm. So this is a new team of lawyers that's coming in and filing this motion to and support him. And he's supposed him. to have like a dedicated person on the legal team. Specifically, one role, right, that he right. has to perform is to review these tweets. Right. And, and so that, that, it seems, the SEC has argued that that protocol wasn't followed. Mm -hmm. Right. When you've got Elon Musk going directly at the SEC, as much as he has been, and almost poking a sleeping bear in some instances as well, how could the SEC then kind of deliver some type of movement or even verdict or judgment without bias as well? Well, I, I think, you know, the SEC's role is to preserve market integrity, right? right. And so they're arguing that, you know, they're there to, to do that. And so by him constantly attacking the institution itself, that's, you know, requires some response. Now, the question is, yeah, people have a First Amendment yeah. right to say whatever they want, which is what he's arguing. But again, as I was saying, that's his weakest argument in the, in the, uh, in the papers. The stronger argument is that he tried to comply. His tweet activity has gone down by over 50 percent. It's clearly is working. But, you know, here in this case, you know, when you have a violation and that violation is, is kind of is brazen, yeah. there's going to be some retribution. I mean, he talks about this, as lawyers do, the SEC's heavy reliance on this interview, referring to the 60 Minutes interview, where he, you know, publicly bashed the SEC again uh, in this motion for contempt smacks of retaliation and censorship. Is this a common way of going back to a court order response? I, I think, you know, when to you... To attack that body, of, to attack the agency? That's normally not the way to, to do things. As lawyers, you want to see if you can resolve it um, before it gets to this point. But remember, the SEC took, they took the, the stronger action here by, by filing an order to show cause. That's a, that's a pretty bold step for them to do that. Why is that? Because that's not normally not something that's done. You usually reach out and you have negotiated and say, hey, let's do this as- So instead of talking, they just slam them with this. Yep, they, they, they put forth the order to show cause. Previously, there were discussions and they came up with a settlement within two days of that tweet. That wasn't happening, that wasn't happening here. And I think the SEC probably, you know, internally felt enough's enough. Mm. What do you think the worst case scenario is from here? He's gonna lose some money. Uh, he's already supposed to be out as chairman, right? And so he's going to lose a little money, and he's going to get a... Greater than or, or less than what we've already seen him pay? I, I don't know if he's going to be fine greater than, but he's going to. he may lose some money, and I think he's going to deal with some tongue lashing by this judge. All right, Ganu Varghese, who is the criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor, joining us here on set today. Thank you so much, Ganu. My pleasure. Thank you.